Man, writing this video has been really hard. There's too much I want to talk about and everything I have so far seems so unstructured. But I gotta do it. I have to. I must talk about it. Let's be honest, right now, we're living in the era of absolute hell. The world seems like it's gonna end soon, society has been cracked into fragments, and everyone is stuck in our dumb little homes. So naturally, what do we all do to keep ourselves alive? Simple. Netflix. And our boy Avatar just checked into the hotel and is caching all of those streaming views. If the original release of the show on Nickelodeon can be considered the first passing of Susan's Comet, then this summer is definitely the second passing. Thanks to Netflix, 2020 has become a renaissance for Avatar The Last Airbender. I mean, just look at these Google trend charts. Isn't this so cool? I promise I'm not too much of a nerd. Back in the late 2000s, when it was first released, Atla was super popular with my childhood friends. Every time I'd go to a friend's house, Nickelodeon would be playing in the background and they'd always be running old or new episodes. Though for some reason, I guess being the idiot I was, I ended up casting it aside. I was probably too busy repeatedly binging the Batman or something. But man, I, I really wish I pulled up those big boy pants and watched this show earlier. About a month ago, I got tired of just browsing for YouTube on my afternoon run, so I eventually decided, screw it, I'm gonna watch a new show. Atla popped up on my recommendation, and I just went with it. At first, I made it a daily thing, watching two to three episodes on the treadmill, but as it went on, I grew more and more in love with the show that I ended up just binging the entire season three in almost one sitting. Yeah, I guess you could say I love this show. I mean, I don't want recency bias to cloud my judgment, but yeah, I really love this show. From the animation, to the soundtrack, to the world building, to the story, to the characters, Avatar The Last Airbender is a masterclass in how to make the perfect show, especially for children. For being something primarily aimed at kids, it has just the right amount of charm and wit to keep anyone fully entertained while still providing its audience with complex, beautiful, and moving stories of the human spirit. It has cemented itself as one of the greatest animated shows. No, one of the greatest shows in general of all time. Time. Now with this surge of popularity, obviously comes the overflux of video essays. There's so many of these doohickeys, I've seen a few of them already and they're amazing, go watch them later. Point being, I don't want to crowd the field too much and do a why it works or a deep dive into character X. Plenty of people are making great videos on that stuff. Instead, I want to take this time to simply provide a comprehensive reflection of my experience with the show. So where do I start? Well, why don't I start with an important aspect of any form of media that I always value. The sound- since about two years ago, I've had this definitive list containing my three favorite original soundtracks. Don't get me wrong, there are a bunch of other OSTs I love as well, but these three are just the ones I can't stop coming back to. And I'm really happy to say I've added another one to that list. Make no mistake though, I initially wasn't the biggest fan of the soundtrack. That weird bouncy theme that plays in season one whenever the gang does some action stuff is overused and just not my thing. But as the season went on, the soundtracks have so drastically improved. Agnikai is perfectly imposing, reminding me of the best from what I've heard in the Indian movies that I watch. This season 3 trailer has some of the coolest awing music I've ever heard. The Sungi horn is a classic. Last Agni Kai would get me crying if I were able to cry while listening to music. Peace is one of the best finale send-ups I've ever heard, kind of reminding me of the real hero from Endgame, my favorite piece from that film. And the main theme is so iconic it gets stuck in my head all the time. Oh, and Avatar's Love is now one of my favorite songs of all time. I also went ahead and listened to a couple tracks from Korra, and my god, Jeremy Zuckerman is able to keep up that quality, maybe even increase it. Although sometimes Korra's OSTs can lean a little bit too heavily on that Urhu whistle sound, as a whole it invokes so much emotion from me that I barely ever feel with a lot of other soundtracks. To Heal and Greatest Change are masterpieces that I hope are cherished for decades to come. TLDR, Zuckerman has composed some stuff that's now near and dear to my heart, and I'm definitely going to check out more stuff from the guy. What's next? Um... Oh yeah, the end. Just a forewarning, I am by no means an animation expert. For a long time I classified Atla as a low-key anime, but clearly the show takes inspiration from anime, and with that there are times where too much of that style can feel a bit cringy, at least for me. Unlike anime though, from what I've seen, the dynamic feel of the characters constantly moving and interacting regardless of the dialogue keeps my eyes stuck to the screen. Yes, it's an extraordinary exaggeration of their expressions, but I think overall that's a good thing. 
I find it really fascinating that the show was animated by three separate animation studios, JM Animation, DR Movie, and MOI Animation. Although I think I prefer JM style over the others, the fact that these three studios came together in a way to make this show is something I find really cool. Plus, from what I've seen from the behind the scenes, the Atla Writers Room gave the three studios a sizable amount of liberties with style, allowing them to be more creative in their approach, which is super awesome. Kudos to everyone involved. Okay, now for the main course, the story. <laughs> At its core, Atla has a relatively straightforward and simple plot. Defeat the Fire Lord in a few months. From an objective perspective, there's not really much to do with that for more than a season, but the charm of Atla's storytelling is how it builds upon that premise. The show does this in a very character-focused way. We explore the main character, the one tasked with the responsibility of ending this war. We meet the people on the sidelines, the ones who've suffered from the societal changes of war. We learn more of the world scorched by the Fire Nation's invasion, the casualties of full-on conflict, and most importantly, we learn about the other side, the Fire Nation Prince we perceive to be the enemy stopping us at every corner, and we learn how his inner rage may be the most important conflict of them all. Avatar, in my opinion, is at its best when it's deconstructing Zuko and his morality, showing us that none of this stuff is black and white, and there are always grays in between. It's amazing to me that in this show that's set up to focus almost solely on the hero's journey, the writers are still able to weave a powerful and moving redemption story as a core element of the show. And the fact that they do this in a kid's show continues to impress me. I mean, imagine being a kid watching this show that with nuance tackles issues of imperialism while still hooking you in with its compelling characters. Again, I really wish I watched this show as a kid. Another thing that I think makes the show's storytelling so amazing is the overall pacing. The thing's 61 damn episodes long, 20 a season, there's a decent amount of stuff to sift through. A lot of shows I watch have a similar format, the DCCW shows for example, but the thing with those and sort of the reason I've stopped tuning into them as frequently is that they spend almost the entire duration of those 20 episodes just jamming the main storyline down your throat. I cannot count on one hand how many times during a season of The Flash I got frustrated with the recurring defeat and reappearance and defeat and reappearance of Cicada. He's a stupid villain, I hate him, and I didn't need him for 20 goddamn episodes. Avatar fixes the problem of drag with a really simple solution, an aspect of the show which I think is done perfectly, maybe even my favorite part of the show. The, uh... Oh yeah, the film. <laughs> The term filler episode has a very negative connotation these days. A lot of people don't like them. We're living in the age of TV shows that are made or marketed as 8 or 11 hour movies rather than an ongoing season. So when a single plot centric show takes a step back from the main threat to goof around in an unrelated way, you can feel like the show is wasting your time. Avatar, however, finds a solution to that by, like the main story, focusing it around character. Almost every filler episode in the show offers us a deeper dive into our core character's ideals. Just look at Sokka's Master, one of my favorite episodes from the show. We've known Sokka to primarily provide comedic relief and serve as a reactionary member of the gang, but underneath all that we get these moments throughout the show that hint at a deeper value at his core. Sokka's Master doubles down on that hard, showcasing how he doubts himself for being the least powerful fighter and doesn't deem himself worthy. The montage of Sokka training and building his meteorite sword is one of the coolest things I've seen in the show, and the moment where Sokka confesses to his master and tells him the truth is such a beautiful moment. This entire family Yasko helps give Sokka a sense of purpose and a drive to lead the revolution, something that comes back in Day of Black Sun. See, the thing with airing episodes every Saturday morning on Nickelodeon, alongside the reruns as well, is that not a lot of people are going to be able to watch this show chronologically from start to finish. So instead of going full out with an 8 hour movie that has a relatively linear plot, the writers choose to make these filler episodes mean something by themselves and make us resonate with the core of our characters and their ideals, drawing us in to watch their lives unfold. Then when we see them in the Siege of the Fire Nation, when we see them battle armies of warriors, when we see them fight for their lives against forces of evil, we feel for them because we know the small journeys that brought them to who they become. I don't think this show's filler structure is perfect as episodes like The Great Divide and Nightmare and Daydreams can stick out a bit like a sore thumb for me, but it gets the right idea. And in a modern world with a kind of trash TV setup from what I've seen, I wish a new show like this would come around, a show that's able to balance plot with filler in a structurally sound way. Which brings me to another part of the show which I think is absolutely perfect. The theme. 
It goes without saying that the series has explored many concepts rarely touched in youth entertainment, but most importantly, it treats these issues with brilliant nuance and importance. While war is the constant backdrop for the show, we also get to see the down-to-earth effects of imperialism. For God's sake, an entire colony of civilization was wiped off the face of the earth, just as a demonstration of power to the rest of the world. Additionally, the idea of brainwashing and systematic oppression is presented really well through the Kingdom of Ba Sing Se, a message that holds up pretty well and even is a decent allegory for our current situation as a nation. However, I think the most important message in this show is presented through the discussion of fate, destiny, and free will. Just look at our characters. They're being held down by various societal expectations. Toph, being blind, is expected to be vulnerable and weak. Katara isn't allowed to master waterbending because she's a girl. Sokka, as a man of his tribe, is expected to take everything into his own hands and becomes dismissive of female warriors. Aang is expected to save the world and blames himself for his past cowardice. And Zuko, having lost his honor, is expected or expects himself to capture the Avatar, honor his country, and serve his father. But all these expectations, all this baggage on everyone's heads, comes crashing down with Iroh's single question to Zuko, the line that I think cements the core idea of this show. It's time for you to look inward and begin asking yourself the big questions. Who are you? And what do you want? Ah! These themes, and all the themes as a whole, represent the show's message that it's more important to be yourself than to abide with the roles society expects of you. A message that I think resonates with fans the most. Speaking of the fans, I want to talk about what's really helped keep Atlas in the limelight. The I've only been a part of this community for a month or so, but man, you guys are really great. While watching the show, I started chain live tweeting my reactions to the episodes, and the reception on that has been really positive. I got to connect with a lot of people over this show. Even the memes are hilarious. I spent a good amount of my mornings just browsing through the subreddit or Instagram just looking for Atla content. And TikTok too? There are good TikToks? It's, it's absolutely crazy. Beyond that, I find it amazing that there's such a consensus about this show. Korra may have been a bit mixed in the upcoming Netflix show is kind of promising and no one talks about the movie, thank God. But the original show itself, the discussion of it is almost always positive. People talking about watching it when it came out, revisiting it now as an adult, waterbending in the shower because they used to be dumb kids, and making fan cams of their favorite characters, discussing deeper themes and fan theories, and even creating an overflux of video essays. The Etla fandom is very much alive and prospering, and I think that's a testament to the power of the perfect kids show. See, I cherish the Batman as an underrated gem, I cherish Spectacular Spider-Man as the perfect Spider-Man story, and I even cherish stuff like Lab Rats, Mighty Med, even Dog with a Blog for being children's sitcoms for my kid brain to turn off and enjoy. But of all of the children's entertainment I've seen, Atlas stands out as being the perfect kids show just for its ability to resonate with its viewers, regardless of nostalgia, even 15 years after its inception. Hell, I'm showing it to my little sister for the first time right now, and she seems to love it. This series has aged like fine wine, and I think it'll continue to do so. And the sad thing is, I don't know if we'll get a show like this again, not to sound like a boomer, but at least to me, modern children's entertainment hasn't been as eye-catching as the shows of our past. With the ever-growing internet and rapid increase in streaming services, networks, and general just types of content, there is no longer that one thing that is tying everyone together. Not a lot of kids anymore are eating cereal Saturday morning and tuning into their favorite show. And that's not entirely a bad thing. There's so much entertainment now, easy access games, streaming, and the monolith that is YouTube. But with this overflux of entertainment, that means that there isn't as much of a draw for those classic weekend cartoons, which, at least for me, is a sad thing to think about. I haven't lost hope though, maybe someday when a new animated show, whether it be streaming or YouTube or whatever, comes out, it will live up to the critical and commercial success of Atla while still being full of passion, excitement, and love. So until we get that new show, watch Avatar, show it to your family and friends. I'm glad I had the pleasure of finally watching this gem, and I'm proud to say that I highly recommend it. Thank you for the writers, the actors, and the animators for making this gem. Uh, yeah, so that's, so that's the video. That's it. What, why are you still here? There, there's nothing else. You all, oh, you're expecting some kind of like little, little inspirational tagline or, or a little thing to end the video in a cool way. No, you're not gonna get. You're not gonna get anything. That stop. Go away. Please.